Kumba said, I hope that you have been inwardly awakened spiritually and that you know what there is to be known and see what there is to be seen. Shikurvaja replied, Indeed, Lord, by your grace I have seen the supreme state. How was it that it eluded my understanding so far? Kumba said, Only when the mind is utterly quiet, when one has completely abandoned all desire for pleasure, and when the senses have also been rid of their colouring or covering, are the words of the preceptor rightly comprehended. We're getting the traditional yogic understanding here. And I'll say more about that in a minute. The various efforts made so far have attained fruition today and the impurities in the bodies have dropped away. The idea here being that previous effort, no matter how erroneous, was not wasted. When thus one is freed from psychological conditioning and the impurities have been removed or purified, the words of the Guru enter directly into the innermost core of one's being just as an arrow enters the stalk of the lotus. You have attained that state of purity and therefore you have been enlightened by my discourse and your ignorance has been dispelled. So the idea being conveyed here is that you have to be pure before you can realize the truth of the Guru's teaching. Kumba had previously been quite merciless in her condemnation of Shikadvaja's austere spiritual practices. The Buddha himself was a renowned ascetic before he stopped being an ascetic. And it was only after he stopped his ascetic practices that he became the Buddha, that he became the enlightened one, the awakened one. And he saw no merit whatsoever in the practices that he pursued before his enlightenment. There was no benefit to them whatsoever. It's rather like winning the lottery. Let's say you buy a lottery ticket every week. And then eventually, after several years, you win the lottery. Was that winning the lottery dependent on all these other tickets that you bought? Was that the fruition of your lottery ticket buying? Well, in one way you could say it. Yes, it was. If you'd never bought these lottery tickets, you'd never win the lottery. But on the other hand, you could just as easily have never bought a lottery ticket, gone along, bought one and won the lottery. So it depends how you look at it. You could say that winning the lottery was the fruition of all your previous efforts. Or you could say it had absolutely nothing to do with it. The idea has also been conveyed here that you have to have your mind in a purified state before you're open to the teachings of the Guru, the preceptor. Now Shikadvaja's mind was not opened by or purified by his ascetic practices. He still had intense attachment, attachment to his asceticism. His delusion had not diminished as a result of his ascetic practices. It was only his desire for understanding and his willingness to be completely open to the teachings of Kumba that got him there in the end. It was only his willingness to give up his most deeply, preciously held ideas that got him there. And Kumba, remember, was an emanation of his wife, Chudala. And if Chudala had turned up in her ordinary form as his wife, as Sikhadvaja's wife, one wonders if he would have been enlightened. Was his mind that purified? Hardly. Chudala had to take the extraordinary step of creating this thought emanation of Kumba 
a young Brahmin who was the grandson of the creator god Brahma. So Shikadvaja's mind was hardly pure. I think we're just getting some honorifics being paid here. By our satsanga, holy company, your karmas, actions and their residual impressions have been destroyed. Till this very forenoon you were filled with the false notions of I and mine on account of ignorance. So he was hardly pure. His mind was hardly purified. Now that on account of the light of my words, the mind has been abandoned from your heart, you have been awakened fully, for ignorance lasts only so long as the mind functions in your heart. Now you are enlightened, liberated, remain established in the infinite consciousness, freed from sorrow, from striving, and from all attachment. So he's been awakened, and now he must remain established. And to do that, He's still got to pursue self-inquiry. Now his spiritual practice begins for real. All his ascetic practices were not spiritual. They were just training for the mind. Nothing to do with spiritual understanding. Now the real work begins. Shikadvaja said, Lord, is there a mind even for the liberated person? How does he live and function here without a mind? So he needs to have some understanding cleared up still. So Shikadvaja still has questions. Kumba replied, Truly, there is no mind in the liberated ones. What is the mind? The psychological conditioning or limitation which is dense and which leads to rebirth is known as mind. This is absent in the liberated sages. The liberated sages live with the help of the mind which is free from conditioning and which does not cause rebirth. It is not mind at all but pure light, sattva. The problem here, the problem that's trying to be addressed here is that the liberated one is still subject to limitations. These are natural limitations. And this is often described as conditioning, but it's not really conditioning at all. Conditioning is attachment, is identification to notions. So they're trying to get around this by saying, well clearly the liberated one still carries on functioning and must use the mind. But it's not the mind which creates notions and beliefs to identify and believe in. So it's described here as pure light, sattva, this idea of purity again the lightness of being, the lightness of not getting attached, the lightness of action, activity without attachment. The liberated ones live and function here established in this sattva, not in the mind. The ignorant and inert mind is mind. The enlightened mind is known as sattva. The ignorant live in their mind. The enlightened ones live in sattva. So this is a new way of putting things. I suppose the idea is there's no dense gravitational pull to notions and ideas. There's no need to invest in a set of notions. Being is lightness.